You need to see my vision. <laughs> that was aggressive. Hey guys, it's Nicole. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. I like to post about books and music, mostly Taylor Swift. My hair is bluish. It kind of faded a little bit. This was entirely an accident. I went swimming, my hair turned like an orangey yellow. So I decided to DIY my own little purple conditioner mask. And it just like stuck a lot more than usual, maybe because of the chlorine removing shampoo or the chlorine itself, I don't know. But I mean, I like it. It's, it's not orange yellow anymore and it's kind of fading into that ashiness that I want, especially at the top of my head. I'm into it, it's like a fun gunmetal. Also, I'm entering Speak Now era with or without Taylor. I don't care how purple I have to make my hair to manifest Speak Now TV into existence. Today I'm going to be running through my idea of what the Lover Fest tour would have looked like. I originally was going to do my dream tour set list, but that would have taken like five hours because I want Folklore and Evermore on it. And it's just, I don't want the responsibility of even making making a YouTube video to live up to other people's expectations as well as my own for like the ultimate greatest hits Taylor Swift concert. So today I'm just going to do what I think Loverfest would have looked like. It may be shifted slightly in my bias for what I think are the best songs for a tour. For example, not including I Forgot That You Existed anywhere on the set list. I just don't think it's a good opener and I don't really see it being performed live, but let's just get into what I think the set list would have looked like and why. And we're going to be going with a very standard time for this. It's not going to be super long or anything. It'll just be what Loverfest would have looked like in 2020, if not for the pandemic, in my opinion. So typically there are about 20 songs during a concert that already feels kind of limiting, but we're gonna stick to around that number. I have a very hectic outline for this video. I re usually really like to script things because then I have an estimate of how long the video will be. With this, there's no telling and I really like to go on tangents. So good luck editing, Nicole. So first of all, I decided to come up with a little pre-show playlist. I really think back to the Reputation tour and how Bad Reputation by Joan Jett was playing. I believe there were some other songs. I've never been to a Taylor Swift concert because I live in the middle of nowhere and I'm poor. Not like poor, but like it's so expensive to travel. <laughs> like I have to go out of state. I have been to concerts before. I've seen Panic twice now, I think. Fall Out Boy. Why is there such a rock scene in Tulsa, Oklahoma? Panic at the Disco definitely had a set playlist before he would start performing. I remember it had like This Is America on it and there were like music videos accompanying them. I don't know if Taylor does that. That part wasn't included on the Reputation Stadium Tour Netflix movie. So I don't really know exactly what that's been looking like since I have never been there. But I mean, I could see music videos being played or maybe just a set of songs. I came up with, I think six of them. Let me just list them all for you. Love You Like a Love Song by Selena Gomez. This just sounds like something Taylor would do because they are best friends, but also the song is very appropriate for this album and theme. Can't Help Fall in Love With You by Elvis Presley. So I'm mixing in some more retro sounds in here. So this is like when everybody's taking their seats, you know, you've got some time to go get popcorn. Yeah, they sell food at those things. I don't think I've ever bought any at concerts though. I haven't been to a concert in such a long time that I can't even remember what goes on there. Buying merch. I definitely always buy a t-shirt at whatever concert I go to. This is what would be playing while all of that is happening, while you're finding your seats, maybe getting invited into the meet and greet section or getting upgraded passes. I want to manifest an experience like that into my life. So Can't Help Falling In Love With You by Elvis Presley. Maybe the music video plays. Love Me Like You Do by Ellie Goulding. So we are mixing in some more modern songs into this mix. That song was on the Fifty Shades soundtrack as well as Taylor's song, I Don't Wanna Live Forever with Zayn. So it kind of makes sense to me. It also fits the theme. Be My Baby by The Ronettes. I think that would just be so cute. Going with that retro theme because of the fact that as Taylor was writing with Jack Antonoff, they wanted a very instrumental sound in the songs that they worked on together. Together, like the kind of songs people would play at weddings in the 70s and 80s. So that's why I'm incorporating some older stuff in here. Still Into You by Paramore. She's friends with Hayley Williams. I feel like it fits. I Love You Baby, but specifically that one cover that like blew up on TikTok in early 2020. I feel like that would be so appropriate for that time period. It's like already viral on TikTok again. People can't stop going back to that cover. I think that would have been really cute. And Walking on Sunshine by Katrina and the Waves. That would be the song that plays right before it starts. Similarly to Reputation by Joan Jett. Walking on Sunshine really makes me think of Paper Rings. That was my main reasoning. 
As far as openers go, I really have a feeling Shawn Mendes would have opened for her. That may be controversial, it may not even be what I would have wanted, but I think that's what would have happened. Also in 2019, the world was obsessed with Lizzo, that was her like huge year. Everyone is still obsessed with her for good reason, but 2019 in specific, I could kind of see Taylor inviting her to open as well. I'm not super committed to these ideas though, so please let me know down below who you think would have opened for her in 2020. I briefly thought about Camilla, but then I remembered she opened for Reputation so I just and then I kind of considered Billy but like I don't know if there's a lot of overlap with their fan bases I mean I definitely like both of them but I don't know if that would have played out so as far as the visuals go, I know we're dealing with a heart-shaped stage. I can't remember if that was ever completely confirmed or not. I tried Googling it. This might just be a thing someone decided and then we all just made it official. <laughs> well, what else would she have done? I don't see anything other than a heart-shaped stage being considered. I'm definitely seeing a 360 degree screen above this stage so people can see her like zoomed in if they're up in the nosebleeds. So it's like a screen that is like rectangular shape and it starts off on the stage like on top of that heart-shaped platform stage and then it slowly rises up as the concert starts it comes up off the stage there's taylor underneath it inside of it i guess because it's hollow her face is zoomed in so we get to the first song well first of all as this thing is like rising i think there would be some kind of like pre-recorded speech that includes the whole i just think that you are what you love i feel like that would happen and so this 360 degree screen rises she's at the top of like some stairs that are not super long but just towards the back of the heart so she can start farther up and then come down those steps and the rest of the heart is pretty big so she has plenty of room to move. I want the concert to start off with her in a pink outfit. I am so undecided on what that is. Something sparkly for sure. And I'm thinking hot pink, like giving Sharpay Evans. I also considered stuff with like feathers, like something that's just very eye-catching. Maybe something off the shoulder or asymmetric, kind of like some of the stuff she was doing during the Lover era. I also see her coming out with pastel ends of her hair. Okay, yeah, it's coming together. Every night she does like a different like pastel color, like blue, green, pink, purple, yellow, whatever. And it's like like that like hair chalk that you just put in on the ends of your hair. It shows up really well on blonde hair. It's really fast and easy. It washes out so she can do lots of different things every time. I see that being a constant on this tour. I also found myself going back to this sparkly hot pink Sharpay Evans coat. Maybe she starts off with that and it's got like a black belt or something and then she takes it off and there's something else pink underneath it. She takes it off after singing Cruel Summer. Cruel Summer is the opener. <laughs> I feel like that is very uncontroversial but specifically it's Cruel Summer and it starts off with the chorus. It's new, the shape of your body, it's blue, and there's like drum solos like crazy. There's a recording of like a fan edit floating around on YouTube of what that could sound like, and there's just like electric guitars, and it's very intense, and then it just goes right into the first verse. Other than that, I think Cruel Summer would just be a little bit edgier live. She's never performed it live, and that makes me want to cry because it's my favorite song on this album. But just a lot of drum solos going on and electric guitar. She would have guitarists, like on the stage I believe. I feel like I'm seeing that to go with the theme of using like the real instruments from a few decades ago. I considered the idea of having an orchestra like in a pit but I don't think this is the right sound for that. I think they did that on the Speak Now tour. This album is just too poppy. I mean it's got some interesting stuff going on but I just don't think an orchestra is necessary. But like real band members for sure. So she starts off the top of those stairs, comes down as she's singing Cruel Summer. There are backup dancers. This is the first number so it's going to be very visually stimulating. Then we get into song number two. She does her whole little greeting spiel. Hi, I'm Taylor. Thank you for coming to hang out with me, all of that. And I feel like there could be some inspirational speech here about this being the first album she owns the masters to, and therefore she wanted to make it the album that is about the thing she loves most in life in its most concentrated form, which is love. I mean, you can say what you want about Lover as far as its quality compared to like her other albums. I didn't really like it too much on the first list it wasn't something that snagged me immediately like a lot of her other albums do but it is the most Taylor Swift album I have ever seen in my life like everything somebody thinks of when they think of Taylor Swift it's incorporated into Lover like it's just very her it's her concentrated image her past works like just squeezed into one album and it's the most romantic one I think it's very fitting that this is the first one that she owns and I think she would talk about that she goes into the song Lover she starts off with the first verse she sings have I known you 20 
20 seconds or 20 years. It kind of like stops for a second, the sound rings out, and then it shifts into you can hear it in the silence. Then ensues a mashup of Lover and You Were In Love. She's singing with a microphone so she doesn't have an instrument. There's a whole band behind her and there's more of a focus put on them in this one than there was with Cruel Summer. Just like those 70s and 80s inspired love songs that would be playing at weddings. Like her and Jack decided, Lover is one of those songs so she would have the band. For number three, we get into I Think He Knows. And I think this would just be a lot of dancers. Nothing crazy, but the concert is like getting moving. Everybody's losing their mind and shaking their asses because I Think He Knows is just wonderful to dance to. I feel like there would be a lot of ass shaking choreography if she so desires. Then we go into a mashup of Gorgeous and Style. It would be the first verse of Gorgeous and then it goes into the chorus of Style. There are backup dancers, kind of reminiscent of what happened on the Rep Tour. I definitely see it going into the chorus of style quickly like by not being mine you've got that james dean like very quickly and then we have like a brief break visuals on the screen i think it would be like a lot of diary type of visuals or maybe even a little scene with her that she pre-filmed lots of like pages turning on those screens and i think there would be a pre-recorded speech about all of those years of her writing in her diaries about this love that she wanted maybe even including clips from interviews where she talked about like getting her heart broken oh i think that would be so cool especially that one clip where she says you know once i find a guy that's right for me i'm not even been going to remember the guy who broke up with me in 25 seconds over the phone when I was 18. Maybe it's a little shady to Joe Jonas, but like they don't have to include his name or anything or take pieces of like her talking about how heartbroken she was during Red and just really contrast that with the themes of this album in the present tense, how she is able to find her Prince Charming finally. And I think she would be appearing in like a pre-recorded video. And it's kind of like that expression she has at the end of the delicate music video, like just very hopeful. And then we kick into London Boy. While this pre-recorded message is Playing, she is changing into <laughs> something reminiscent of this, of course, but I think it would be a Union Jack jacket, Union jacket with fringe, kind of like the rainbow one she wore for some performance. And it would be a sparkly short red dress underneath. I kind of think back to the Dear John dress from Speak Now, but also I think to the, like the lucky one, that red sparkly thing, something halter, I think. Sparkly, easy to move in, really pretty short. Like it's definitely like a bodysuit she can twirl around and you don't see any Anything. It's just like a bodysuit, but with a skirt around it. And I'm seeing white go-go boots. Like I just feel like the 50s, 60s, like British invasion would kind of influence that style. I see so much for London Boy, so buckle your seatbelts. It starts off with visuals of the Big Ben clock, like on the screen. So it's transitioning from her looking hopeful, like in the delicate music video. And then we see this Big Ben clock. It strikes three times or whatever, like on 12 or 13, 13, because they use military time. Me coming up with this, like off the cuff. Yeah. 13. The clock strikes 13 and then she is on the stage. She comes out of one of those red telephone booths. The outfit is insane. We could go driving in all my scooter. Please excuse me for that. And as he's like saying this, she like lifts her arms and you see the fringe and it's just so obnoxious. Everyone would shit a brick, but there's a lot of like moving around on the stage happening, like specific places she needs to go to because there's just a lot of things to see. She's taking us on a tour of London for this song and she's kind of giving us that attitude of the ringmaster from the We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together performance on the Red Tour. Really intense props and effects at this point. It's all London everything. Like I want those big red buses either on the stage in some way or on the screen. I feel like backup dancers in those buses would be kind of cool. They're like dancing on top of them. They're not like real buses, but just some kind of moving prop on wheels. There's a London eye towards the back of this giant heart-shaped stage. This is like the snake of the Loverfest and she's able to get in one of those, what are they called? Carts? Carriages? And she's able to go around up in the Ferris wheel while she's singing. And she's able to like wave to the people in the nosebleeds. Some of the male backup dancers are dressed like those English guards or like the old timey British police officers maybe. At the end, Union Jack confetti explodes. <laughs> I feel like the most confetti that's ever been done on like a Taylor Swift concert or a concert in general, it would be the Loverfest. So London Boy finishes. She 
she takes off the jacket. So it's just the white go-go boots and the red like halter sparkly dress leotard thing. And she does love story, you belong with me, like a mashup similar to what happened on Reputation. Number seven, she does paper rings. There would be like a whole band with her, maybe just some really like sunshiny visuals. I haven't thought about this one too much. I think it's just kind of like a moves the concert along type of song, backup dancers for sure. And then Cornelia Street, I definitely want New York skyline visuals behind her. It's kind of like a little more of an intimate moment, but it would be with the full instruments. Her band continues to back her up. Then she's changing again. So we would see some visuals of a snake turning into a butterfly similar to the me music video, but definitely different. Like there's gotta be a way to make that really cool, but I definitely just see snake turning into a butterfly visuals at this point in the concert. She goes into a mashup of Delicate and Call It What You Want, and it's on a piano. She is now on a platform that is moving to transfer her to the B stage. There are also white fairy lights all over the platform and the piano, as well as pink Cornelia flowers all over the piano all over the platform. The piano is white and her outfit is this sparkly dress except it's full length. There's a detachable skirt. <laughs> the amount of time I spent planning this but she has it as the full length version while she's doing this. She's sitting at the piano. She's like moving on a platform. It's cute. It's romantic. So she is transferred to the B stage. I feel like the B stage might be a butterfly shape or it might be like a circle with like butterfly wings at the back of it that are like color changing. Kind Kind of similar to this performance but also reminiscent of this mural. She does a mashup of Today Was a Fairy Tale and Enchanted. This is so so lover. I got this idea from a mashup I actually saw on TikTok. Holy shit, do these songs go together? Search it up on TikTok right now. Today Was a Fairy Tale Enchanted mashup. You need to see my vision. <laughs> That was aggressive. Halfway through, she like gets up and she does something reminiscent of that Wildest Dreams Enchanted mashup from 1989, where she like takes off the long skirt part of this dress and now it's short, just like it originally is in this picture. Then she grabs her guitar and she does a surprise song on the guitar. Now I definitely see just kind of whatever fan favorites or singles that didn't make the cut of the full set list. Things like a lot of the stuff from Red that's just a little bit too sad for the ideas behind Loverfest. Like, I knew you were trouble, we are never ever getting back together all too well. I also see Begin Again happening here at some point. I see Shake It Off happening here acoustically. I think it's such a fun song to do acoustic and she did it for the last two concerts, obviously 1989 and Reputation. I just feel like she would take a breather with that one for this tour and do it acoustic at one of the dates. 15 might show up and our song because there's nothing from debut on my set list. But I also see some of the more underrated songs showing up. Beautiful Ghosts would be played for sure, but on acoustic guitar, which I I think would be interesting because it's a piano song. She would play this because it's part of the lover era. I feel like Sweeter Than Fiction would be played. Just like some of the really more obscure songs. I don't know why I see her doing that, I just do. Safe and Sound, I think that would be such a comforting moment to be doing live. Only the Young, of course, she would do that because the Miss Americana movie had just come out at that point. And I see her performing mine as a surprise song at some point. Next, she goes into Afterglow, but it's on her guitar. But at this point is when the full band comes back in. So I think what I see happening is they are all on that either circle shaped or butterfly shaped B stage with her. They were not playing while she was doing the surprise song because the surprise song is always just her and her guitar. So they accompany her for Afterglow acoustically because I think Afterglow lyrically sounds like a lot of the stuff on debut or Fearless. It like has a lot of cliches. So I feel like she would acoustic it up for the live performance. Then she goes into False God and she's in that dress. Think about this. Oh my Oh my god because the only time she's performed it live it was in that pantsuit but i think in this oh my god can you imagine the edits the videos there is definitely a saxophonist, saxif saxophonist? I literally went to music school. There's somebody playing a saxophone, walks back to the main stage in the same dress and she's greeting people with the instrumental of the archer playing the whole time. So it's that like shimmery sound. The archer continues to play. She kind of gets on the stage. She disappears for a second. She comes back out. She's in a ball gown and it's covered in LED lights. If I have some visuals I can find, I will insert them now. I'm just gonna like verbally describe this to you because it gets a little complicated. I think it's like a bodysuit and a skirt is removable. Both of them have LED lights on them. The fabric itself is gold, but the LED lights can be programmed to any color. I definitely see them being purple, gold, and pink 
for the archer. So she sings the archer because the archer sounds best live, but it transitions into holy ground. Who could stay tonight? I'm gonna dance. So it like goes with that very beat driven type of vibe that the archer live at least and holy ground both share. It ends on if I'm not dancing with you, it rings out everybody's cheering, losing their mind. And then she goes into it's nice to have a friend. I'd like to see her play ukulele for this in a ball gown. That'd be so cute. It would be very speak now reminiscent. And then she does a song with a guest. She definitely takes the skirt off at this part. So it's just the gold bodysuit. The LEDs turn off because that would be kind of obnoxious to do a duet with like LED body. I see Selena Gomez coming on and we have to consider that her album Rare just came out earlier that year. By that point, I think they both would have sung the song Rare off of that album. I feel like Taylor would really enjoy that song. Like it's very playful. I'm so rare. Like I could just see them having such a fun time with that. <laughs> I literally wrote Harry Styles question mark. What stuff was popular by him in 2020? I can't even remember. Adore You maybe? Possibly Golden? If that was out at that point. A Girl Can Dream. <laughs> so next there's a quick change into a pastel rainbow outfit. So I know she wore a lot of rainbow stuff during Reputation and the Lover era, but I'm seeing something that is more pastel, more romantic, something maybe kind of like fluffy in a sense, like a baby doll type of vibe to it or like off the shoulder flowy, just more subdued rainbow. She goes into You Need to Calm Down. It's inevitable. Even though a lot of people don't like the singles on this song, they would be performed at Loverfest. I think she would do a speech right before You Need to Calm Down where she talks about her loving love so much and wanting everyone to be able to love exactly who they love and connecting the themes of love to gay rights. She does that in her cute little pastel rainbow dress. Lots of fun visuals on the screens, backup dancers, of course. Everybody just screams as loud as they can. Shade never made anybody less gay. And then she goes into The Man. So we're kind of like knocking out all those political songs that I really have a feeling she would perform. I really like The Man acoustic, but for the Lover Fest, it would be full instruments, full accompaniment, maybe like the music video plays behind her or some kind of like interesting visual. And then there's another break. So then she changes into a dress like this, but not long. I don't want to do too many long dresses. We've already done two. She can't dance in them that easily. So it's like this, but short. Something short, but not too short. It's definitely a dress more than like a bodysuit with like a little flap over her ass. Like some of those are. 1989, I'm looking at you. I love those though, no shade. I thought about doing something that has like a monarch butterfly print on it, but I think that's a little too obnoxious. I definitely like the idea of having little butterflies on the straps. Maybe she's got similar heels to what she wore to that one thing. I'll put them on the screen. And this dress specifically has to be orange because it's a cool idea to have people just eat that shit up because of karma. Like in later years, Years, like at this point in time, we'd all be looking back like, holy shit, that means something. Whether or not it actually does, it would be some fun lore. <laughs> so she gives a speech before Miss Americana about regretting not speaking up in 2016. Mostly, I want her to be talking about how politics personally affected her. That's what makes Miss Americana the greatest political song I've ever heard. I didn't even know it was political for like the first six or seven months. It's entirely how she viewed it, how it affected her, how she felt. She's gonna have a focus during this speech on how important it is to find someone through all the noise and just making sure your inner circle is strong before fighting back and like giving yourself to the cause I guess. All about how much support she had to have to even make that post encouraging people to vote in Tennessee and how much pushback she had like from her dad. Just kind of her personal experience. Nothing that's preachy. Taylor says things best when she says exactly how it affects her. I think back to the essay trial that she won that she spoke about during one of their reputation shows. Just something really touching. So she does Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince in her little orange butterfly dress. I'm not sure exactly how this one would look like. Maybe she'd have like cheerleader type backup dancers or like some high school type of visuals. And then she goes into Death by a Thousand Cuts. She does a brief little intro to this about how she still got it when it comes to breakup songs. Like how they're always going to be a part of her regardless. Maybe kind of hinting towards how fiction has been inspiring her a lot lately and like it's always been something that has influenced her songs it's not just her personal life because we know that song is based on the movie someone great stuff like that blah 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 she's got her guitar for this but there's also a band behind her and it's got the full accompaniment because i love all the different crazy sounds like all the drums and the violins all the really intense sounds of death by a thousand cuts so none of those are missing she's just also got her guitar i think maybe for this it would be cool to like have her go around on that platform again but this time there's no piano on it it's just her like 
like tied with some shit like the <laughs> tied with some shit like the clean performance i think it was on 1989 or you were in love i think it was so she goes around on that platform she comes back down and she does a mashup of daylight and red and this is on piano so the piano is on the stage at this point very reminiscent of the paris show it's just a super intimate moment where she connects lover to red in a way how they're kind of polar opposites of each other like rep and lover are two sides of the same coin but red is its polar opposite also thematically speak now is the most similar to lover i remember i read once someone said that lover was like speak now and 1989 had a baby like in the themes and in the sounds it's very 80s reminiscent at some points so i see some ties being made into her past albums that would be happening with daylight and red and then for a closer she does me the openers would come out at this point whoever they are all the backup dancers everyone's like celebrating there's confetti at this part too heart shaped butterfly shaped i think butterfly would be cool so it looks like they're like flying down lots of confetti on this tour <laughs> biodegradable i think she already does biodegradable confetti because it like melts if it gets wet and if sean mendes is opening for her first of all i do not think she would have him singing lover with her like that one remix i just don't see that happening because that remix was not well received but also it's like we want to hear you taylor however for me if brendan would not have been touring with her which i don't really think he would i think maybe he would have shown up for one of the dates but i see sean mendes coming out and singing brendan's parts i see that happening if he's opening every single night it just it just feels natural if lizzo's there i feel like she would sing some of it like it would just be a whole party everyone takes a bow at the end that's it wow <laughs> and of course this would all be recorded at the london show for all of us to view on netflix at home and relive this experience or live it for the first time like us middle of nowhere folks this is my fantasy of what the lover fest would have looked like i broke my own heart in creating this video for you guys i tried to be as objective as possible i think i succeeded pretty well in this i did let one of my swifty friends go over this and he really enjoyed it so i'm hoping this is well received please let me know down below what you thought and tell me all of your ideas for what you think lover fest would have looked like whether that's songs outfits stages props all of it i want to know and also let me know any requests you might have down in the comments if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up if you want to follow me on my instagram it is right here and if you want to follow me on my tiktok that is right here i will see you all next week for another video and i hope you have an amazing day bye guys i know that we could we would run away to an island